Hi everybody, I'm Terry Darty with the Mom's Choice Awards, and I'm here this afternoon with Susan Daniel Fayad, author of My Grandfather's Masbaha. Okay, did I do it? Yes. Okay, so I would like for you to share a quick snippet on how you taught me to pronounce Masbaha correctly. Well, just think about a Christmas story or any time during the holiday season in winter, and you're, it's so cold outside, and you just, you're breathing, and that hot air comes on the glass, and that ha sound. Well, you and know, you say, mas baha. <laughs> that was really helpful. I mean, I don't mean to sound ignorant, maybe I am, but I imagine that you often run into folks who are, have difficulty sort of figuring out how do I pronounce that. So it was very, very helpful and very, very relevant to me. Sure. The other piece, speaking of relevance, is, you know, right before BEA started, there was a whole major campaign about we need diverse books. Yes. Clearly, we have diverse books. Right. Diverse award-winning books. Right. What would you, how would you characterize my grandfather's Masbaha in terms of drawing on culture and tradition for different audiences? Okay, sure. Um, you know, we need diverse books. There was that campaign for a reason. Um, you know, uh, demographics are changing in the U.S. And in 30 years from now, it's not going to be, it's not going to look the way it is. And so kids need to know about other cultures. They need to know about other ethnicities um, for them to be aware and also for them to identify themselves in books. Yes. I agree with that completely. You know, when kids identify themselves in books, they read more, they achieve more, they feel better about themselves, and so they do better. You know, maybe if kids felt better about themselves, we wouldn't have as many people going into schools and <laughs> well, doing other say, things. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you sound like a teacher. <laughs> so, um, also, this is a book about a uh, Lebanese American family, you know, or, and it can be applied to Arab Americans or any other uh, culture from that part of the area. And it's about uh, a kid who comes home one day and is bored and he just finished up with a play date, but at that moment he has nothing to do. And so he decides that he has nothing and he has no friends. And so his grandfather, with an Eastern tool like the masbaha, the beads, teaches him that he really does have more than he thinks he does. Well, can you tell, you brought some masbaha with you. Sure. Can you tell us about how it's used? It is, the, the ordinary masbaha, you know, they come in all sizes, all kinds of stones, all kinds of, you know, other materials with it. But the basic one is 33 beads. Uh, this is separated into three categories, 11 at each. And it comes with, you know, a top bead and then a tassel at the end. And so usually you'll find in the East, just like you see in the story, the grandfather holding it and it's just sliding the beads, you know? And a lot of times you'll see men there in that part of the area just doing that. They're not praying just passing time, something to do. A lot of times we're ha they're having a conversation. They'll say, oh, well, let's see, you know, um, how many books we have at Mom's Choice Award. Let's count them. You know, how many So they can use it like an abacus as well. Right, they can use it as an abacus. They can use it as a counting tool, you know. And it tells a lot about the culture, you know, it's a lot about history. Um, and it's been around for thousands of years. Um, and you know, it's it's a tool where you can use it for counting, and in the story, he uses it for counting his blessings. Have you had? I mean, the book just came out last November, correct? Yes, o October, November. October. No, okay, October. I mean, have you had a chance to share the story with kids or other families? I mean, what has the reaction been in those situations? Well, yes, I have a ch uh, I have had a chance to share it with uh, other children at schools and um, what age? I would, you know, I would say a good age was from between four and eight. Okay, you know, 
And this is a story, even now my son is at the age almost seven, he can read it. It's exciting. And he oh, sees yeah, himself in it and he identifies himself. No longer does he come home and tell me, Mom, I want to change my name to Michael and dye my hair blonde. <laughs> <laughs> that's good news. Yes, that's good news. <laughs> so the reaction has been, especially from Arab Americans, they come up to me and they tell me, you know what, I'm so glad that you wrote the story. You know, we need more like this. Keep writing. What you a know? great encouragement. What a great encouragement. She's like, well, we need to read to our kids every night, so why not read, you know, stories about us? Well, I am so glad you were able to join us in the studio, and thank you for telling us about my grandfather's Masbaha. Thank you.